So GPT-5 has been a very controversial AI release with some people citing the model as disappointing, while others simply saying that this was a great release. In this video, I'll show you guys both sides and a lot of things that most people are missing from this release. So if you've been living under a rock or you haven't been paying attention to the forums or what people have been saying online, many people have been simply disappointed with the model release. We can see one user here says that GPT-5 is horrible, and this isn't some kind of cherry-picked random example. There are tons and tons and tons of examples where we continually see that individuals are not particularly happy with the release of GPT-5. In this video, I'll explain to you exactly why that is, because most people are missing something, and I'll show you guys exactly what OpenAI did wrong and what they need to fix almost immediately. So they talk about, you know, the fact that short replies are insufficient, more obnoxious, and one of the things that you're going to see is a recurring theme is that there's less personality and way less prompts allowed. Now, like I said already, this wasn't the only time I saw this. Many different comments online from Twitter and Reddit users have simply said that GPT-5 is underwhelming and terrible. Now, I hold a very different opinion to this, and it's not because I'm in the AI space, but I always try to view things objectively rather than subjectively. I don't want to be an open AI fanboy nor a hater. I want to see, is the model actually good? And I will say that open AI do have themselves to blame, partly because GPT-5 was hyped up for so long as this incredible model that's going to be able to do many different things. I mean, take a look at this user who said, after thorough evaluation of ChatGPT-5, these are my realizations. Claude is pretty awesome. I'm a lot less concerned about the ASI or AGI 2027, whatever doomy scenario was bouncing around my noggin. GPT-5 is about lowering the cost for open AI and pushing the boundary and not pushing the boundaries of the frontier. And apparently, Sam Altman's post about the Death Star looming on planet Earth was hypey, very, very hypey, and just, you know, too far, and had nothing to do with the capabilities of GPT-5. And this is something that I saw time and time again uploaded. If you go to Reddit, if you go to Twitter, you'll see countless posts of people saying GPT-5 is underwhelming, it's just not a good model, yada, yada, yada. But here's where most people have made the grave mistake. GPT-5 is a very good model, but here's the mistake. So the big mistake that OpenAI did when they released this model was the fact that it just didn't have the right model selector. So if you don't know, GPT-5 is supposed to be a kind of unified model that is better in terms of being able to think when it needs to think and, you know, respond quickly when it needs to respond quickly. However, they didn't actually enable that on the day of release. You can see they responded in an Ask Me Anything thread that yesterday they had an issue with the auto switcher and it was out of commission for a chunk of the day. And the result was that GPT-5 seemed way dumber. And so they're making some interventions to how the decision boundary works that should help you get the right model more often. And they're going to make it more transparent about which model is answering a given query. Essentially, what they're stating here is that most people were interacting with not the most intelligent version of GPT-5. And I think what OpenAI have done here is tried to balance free users and paid users because what OpenAI realistically wanted to do was to bump up the intelligence for absolutely everyone. So they pushed all of the free models into the back, like GPT-40, all of those models, and then gave, you know, essentially most free users GPT-5, hoping that because it was smarter and more intelligent, that users would have found that, oh, GPT-5 is way smarter. However, number one, the router didn't work. So they got, you know, a slightly, I wouldn't say dumber model, but because the model was more intelligent, but it lacked personality, a lot of people just didn't really like it. You can see here that people caught on to this. They said they removed all their expensive capable models and had to replace them with an auto router that defaults to cost optimizations. And they said that sounds pretty bad. And then, you know, there were multiple people saying Google is going to cook them soon. Genie 3 is far more impressive than GPT-5. But take a look at the real issue here. I think this is much more of a sort of, it's much more of a nuance issue because this article basically shows that the cat is already out of the bag. So this article, talks about how Sam Altman says that some users want ChatGPT to be a yes man because they've never had anyone to support them before. So the thing is, the ChatGPT, like the new version, it's not as much of a yes man as you think. So remember, okay, they removed the update where ChatGPT was overly flatling, agreeable, 
often described as psychophantic. This is, you know, because the model was essentially agreeing with what everyone would say. If you started rambling about some potential nonsense, the model would say, yes, you're on the right track. This is amazing, yada, yada, yada. And so they actually removed this entire update. However, take a look at what people are saying now. And this was what I saw all over my Twitter feed is that the chat GPT ask me anything is mostly people begging for GPT-4 back because of its personality and not because of the raw intelligence. And that is very, very true. You can see it says, please bring back 40 and not 4.1. Not all of your users are corporate or coders. These incredible models were friendly, supportive, and day-to-day -day sidekicks. I can't believe you just shanked them away. And it's quite true. The other models were a lot more pleasant to talk to. GPT-5 seems like a just, you know, an intelligent co-pilot that doesn't really care about you and just cares about being right. And I know that sounds very, very weird to say, but the personality of these models most certainly will have to change. Considering that OpenAI is focusing on the largest customer, um, you know, user base, like it's focusing on the broadest applications, which is normal people talking to the model every single day. Now, what's crazy about this is that if we actually take a look at Polymarket, we can see that odds are betting against OpenAI. So the thing here is that this is a system where you can, I guess you can visualize where most people are thinking about the market on various different, you know, things you can just, you know, really bet on anything. But you can see here that after the GPT-5 release, they had bet that which company would have the, you know, best model by the end of August. Most people would have bet that there would have been OpenAI. We can see here that it's actually going back to Google. So we can see that OpenAI completely dropped to a 14% rating after that GPT-5 release. And so I'm pretty clear that the GPT-5 release was a blunder for the most part. And considering that there was so much hype leading up to it, you can see here most people would say that, yep, OpenAI is going to take the lead. Now we're seeing that that isn't the case in terms of what people are expecting for the future. And I'm going to explain to you why I think this is not as crazy as people think. Another blunder on the GPT-5, you know, release was of course this chart. And like I've seen this shot on literally every social media platform where people are talking about AI. And essentially it's just strange because we can see that they're trying to say that GPT-5 is significantly better on the SWE bench verified. Maybe this was an honest mistake because it was rushed out, but a lot of people are saying that it's very weird because why on earth is the 52 higher than the 69? And why is the 69 right next to the level 30? There were just so many things wrong with this chart. I don't even want to get into it completely. But of course, we are in the benchmark area now. And so if we start to look at other benchmarks, this is Simple Bench, one of the greatest benchmarks when it comes to judging how well an AI reasons with common sense. And Gemini simply just takes the lead. And it is a much older model here. And I think it goes to show that Google most certainly cooked with that model when we look at the kind of reasoning that is implemented in the back end of the model. I'm not sure how the model thinks, but it's clearly thinking at a crazier level. And you might not even notice that GPT-5, the high version, the one with extended reasoning, is actually all the way down here at number five, okay? It's in fifth place when it comes to reasoning. It's not terrible, of course, it's only really 4%, no, 6% behind the first model. But considering what most people had expected for GPT-5, they would have expected this model to exceed most benchmarks by at least a significant amount. And because, of course, we're not seeing that, it's a little bit surprising considering that, you know, OpenAI have held the lead for quite some time. In addition to that, when we do look at another benchmark, which is the ARCAGI benchmark, which is a very difficult benchmark in terms of reasoning about complex problems and shapes and images, we see that Grok4 is one of the leaders in this by quite some margin. And this is, once again, pretty surprising because these really difficult benchmarks where models struggle with we would have expected OpenAI to at least lead in that way. Now, personally, like overall, a lot of people are starting to get bearish on OpenAI, but for me personally, I don't think that is the right thing to do because I don't think that OpenAI truly cares about the ARC AGI to leaderboard anymore. I think OpenAI's mission has fundamentally changed. I think people need to understand, and this isn't me defending OpenAI, but I think you have to understand what they are trying to do now is that they are no longer a research lab and more so a product-focused company because 
ages ago in Sam Altman's interview. He did say that the most valuable thing in five years is going to be one billion daily active users and not a state of the art model. Okay. Like that's what he thinks is going to be the most valuable thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just optimize for what the average consumer wanted, like a chatbot that was just, you know, friendly, amazing, and something that people can just genuinely have a good experience with. When we take a look at what other labs are focusing on, of course, Anthropic is going to be focusing on the coding aspect. Grok is focusing on, you know, the completely other aspect with their kind of companions. I think ChatGPT is just that staple for average users, and I think it makes sense for them to sort of just focus on that. But let me know what you guys think about this.